Hello, welcome to the Thursday, July 28th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brad today posted another one of his malware analysis uh, diaries. This time he's going over an iced ID sample. And this particular sample either installs a dark VNC or Cobalt Strike. As so often, the attack starts with a good old email and a password protected zipped ISO file. Password, of course, is pretty easy and can typically be found in the email, but is of course intended to make analysis, in particular automated analysis, a little bit more difficult. Now, once the user opens uh, this zip file and then exposes the ISO file that's included, there is the old link file trick that is then being used to load a DLL and then Iced ID is installed. Now, Iced ID is fairly uh, flexible and, of course, has been around for a while. After the malware is completely installed, that's then when Dark VNC or Cobalt Strike will be installed to obtain persistent access to the victim's system. As usual with uh, Pratt's diaries, you'll find links uh, to the malware on VirusTotal as well as packet captures. So great learning opportunity here again to learn how to figure out what's happening based on network traffic. And WebAssembly is back in the news and with that uh, crypto jacking. WebAssembly is code that runs in browsers a little bit like JavaScript, but unlike JavaScript, it comes in a binary sort of compiled format. Now, it's not assembly language as WebAssembly implies. It's more bytecode, uh, but the idea is that you can run it in the browser. It's platform independent and it's faster than normal JavaScript. So with it running faster and more efficient, it of course makes a great tool for attackers uh, to run crypto miners in users' browsers. That's something, of course, that we've heard of before, typically implemented in JavaScript. Way back in the day, there was good old CoinHive, a service that made that really easy. But with CoinHive shutting down and also browsers implemented actually uh, some features uh, in JavaScript that made it more difficult to sort of abuse the crypto functions in in JavaScript that pretty much has sort of put uh, the traditional JavaScript based crypto jacking at a halt. Now, Sukuri Security has found an attack affecting multiple websites that essentially resurrects that old crypto jacking idea. Now it's implemented in WebAssembly. So some of the countermeasures that browsers implemented don't actually work here. And Sukuri also as part of its blog lists some of the script names and URLs that it connects to some of the uh, minor pools that are being used uh, by this script. They found about 207 affected pages. That's of course just what Sukuri was able uh, to find. There may be more out there. The common theme here as often appears to be, well, a uh, vulnerable content management systems, maybe weak passwords, maybe outright vulnerabilities in systems like WordPress. And that's, of course, how these malicious scripts ended up on these particular pages. And last year, Israeli security company NSO Group uh, made a name for itself in developing some sophisticated commercial spyware, became known as Pegasus, in particular around Saturday exploits in mobile devices. But, uh, well, it uh, looks like uh, NSO Group isn't alone, while NSO Group pretty much has stopped uh, existing and it shouldn't really be a surprise that other companies are developing uh, similar software and have similar uh, business models. Microsoft uh, published a blog post pointing fingers at an Austrian-based company, DSIRF, which Microsoft qualifies as a private sector offensive actor. Its product, SubZero, is a malware toolset that uh, isn't really clear where it's being sold to. Its web page does not really sort of outline how they're selling uh, SubZero, if it's for sale 
at all. And as Oak Group, of course, sort of had fairly restricted uh, policies there around only selling to governments. But Sub-Zero has shown up in attacks against a number of different organizations. And the reason Microsoft sort of became aware of Sub-Zero and also published uh, this blog post is that uh, they found uh, the Sub-Zero toolset using uh, Zero Day vulnerabilities in Windows, in Adobe Reader, as far as back as last year. The Microsoft blog post includes a number of different TTPs uh, that are used by Sub-Zero. So hopefully it'll help you to figure out if you are uh, infected maybe by this particular tool or at least to figure out if you would be able to detect an infection and if your protections are actually up to snuff uh, for these kind of uh, threats. Well, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.